Central Church. Happy sixth day of Christmas. Oh, we're just going to be casual today. Come on in. Set a spell. Happy sixth day of Christmas. The 12 days of Christmas begin on Christmas Day, and it, so it is still Christmas. We have just shaken off the retail portion of that. Amen, right? So this morning's service is a service of song and reflection and being able to be present to Christmas and have Christmas present to us. If you see me moving funny, I, I might as well just tell you all, I, it, if you see me moving funny, my, my uh, back spasmed yesterday. So I am moving slowly and carefully, and I will not be ascending to the pulpit today. Um, but anyway, so I've had a couple of you express concern, so I'm fine. I'm fine. But uh, if you see me moving funny, that's why. We are gathered, however, not to focus on problems, but to celebrate <clears throat> the coming of the Christ child into our lives. We are gathered to sing praises to God, to offer our prayers, to be in community with each other this morning. So may the Holy Spirit be present with us. May the Holy Spirit fill this time and this place. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts to overflowing with joy and peace and love. Welcome to worship. Good morning. My name is Bonnie Cole, and I'll be your liturgist this morning. I'd like to um, welcome you all here on this lovely snowy morning. It's nice to see a little white on the ground. Um, also, if you are watching as part of our internet or TV audience, we'd like to welcome you as you join us in worship this morning as well. And if we have any visitors here with us, if you would like some more information about Central, there are packets available at each of the doors as you exit the sanctuary this morning. There are also friendship pads, the burgundy colored books at the end of each of the pews. Please sign them and pass them along to your neighbor so you know who you're worshiping next to later on when we greet each other. We have a lot of things going on here at Central, as always, so please refer to your bulletin and all of the announcements listed there. You can take some time later to read that, but just a few that I'd like to highlight for you. We need a lot of volunteers next weekend. Um, next Saturday, January 5th, we need volunteers to help out with the blood drive. Also, we are looking at relocating the nursery. Um, so we need some people to help out on Saturday to prepare for that move. They're going to be moving upstairs to a different room. And next Sunday after the 11 o'clock service, the church will be de-decorated or undecorated, <laughs> something. Uh, so we need a lot of help uh, to uh, take down everything and pack it away for until next year. As always, everyone is welcome at any of the events that you see listed in the bulletin. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the church office. Please join me now as we have our call to worship. Glorious God, in Jesus, your grace appears. Help us to ponder your words of love by the light of your spirit. Let us pray together. Eternal God, from the vastness of the universe to the poverty of a stable, your life shines in a tiny baby wrapped in rags. Such humble love astounds us. In Jesus, you have become one with us that we might become one with you. Open our hearts to receive his love with joy, that he may be born in us and we in him, through Christ our Lord, born to us in Bethlehem. Amen.
Christmas. <laughs> did you have a good Christmas? You did? What should we see if everybody else did? Did everybody else have a good Christmas? Yeah? It's so exciting to be part of all of that, isn't it? You guys sang on Christmas Eve, right? And we had a great big celebration here. Here comes Anthony. Do you know that Christmas is more than one day? It is. It's 12 days. You know that song, right? The 12 days. You know what? I thought briefly about singing that song as part of children's time today, but mercifully, <laughs> we're not. But 12 days of Christmas. Christmas goes all the way from Christmas Day to what we call Epiphany. That's next Sunday. And do you know why? Because we need a lot of time we need a lot of time to celebrate the Christ child coming to us, don't we? We need time to sing the songs and to be happy, right? Once we've got past all the busy stuff of Christmas. So I want us, as we go into this week, as we think ahead to Epiphany, as we think ahead to the 12th day of Christmas, I wonder if we can find something to celebrate about Christmas every day until next Sunday. Do you think we can? I think we can too. Like today, I celebrate that all these people came to church today, even though it's snowy and it's a different time. And it is snowy, isn't it? I celebrate that you guys came up, even if you're not feeling so good, you came to church today. And I'm happy about that. I celebrate that, right? There's something to celebrate every single day. And I hope that in this week, whole other week to go, we can find lots of things to be happy about. God's presence in our lives, Jesus loving us, Jesus teaching us how to love other people, all that stuff, that's all celebration stuff, isn't it? It has nothing to do with presents and all that other stuff we do at Christmas, does it? Right? Well, I want to thank you for thinking about that. I want to thank you for coming up and keeping me company up here this morning. Do you think we could pray before you go back and sit down? You want to repeat after me today? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for Christmas and for joy and hope and peace and love and for all the things Jesus teaches us. Help us to celebrate his birthday every single day. Thanks for coming up. Oh, wait, I had something for you, too. Bending with my knees. I expected a lot more children this morning. Remnants of Christmas. More Christmas. Because it's still Christmas. scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 8 in the Old Testament found in your pew Bible on page 492. 
O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Here ends the reading. May God add a blessing. Will the ushers please come forward as we now offer our gifts and tithes with this morning's offering. If you're visiting with us today, please do not feel obligated to place anything in the plate. You are our guest and your presence here is a gift.
All things come from you, O God. Magnificent and merciful God, we come to worship you this morning at the close of one year and threshold of a new one. Our faithfulness in the year behind has not been all that we wished it to be, and we know the road ahead of us holds many new challenges and opportunities to be the followers you desire. May the giving of our gifts this morning help firm our resolve to be the disciples of Christ that you desire for the world, full of compassion, mercy, and loving kindness. May we, like your son Jesus, be found dwelling in your presence and love when others come looking for us. In Christ's steadfast love we pray. Amen. Now's a time when we can share in our joys and concerns as noted in your bulletin. In the hospital this week, Barbara Reynolds is at Willow Point Rehab. Other church family and friends to keep in your prayers, Gail Scott, and of course our homebound members. We also want to say a thank you to Barbara Reynolds, Karen Abadesian, Pam Russell, Martha Petrush, and Carla Wood who contact all of our families once a year as we pray for them through our um, prayer program. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
We bring so much to our prayer times each week as this community of faith, our sorrows, our joys, our celebrations. We bring the concerns of the world around us as well. There is so much happening in places that we've never even heard of, never been neighbors around the world who need God's comfort and love. And so we bring the world into our prayers with us. Amazingly, it all fits here with us in this space. I'm wondering where you've seen God at work in your world this week that we can celebrate in prayer. Martha. Wonderful. Martha's, Martha's mom is home from rehab and surrounded by family. The Christmas Eve service. I love that. It was all the things. It was it was an amazing time, and God's spirit was here powerfully that night, I think. Where else have you seen God? Yes. We're asking, we're <laughs> Anthony's great-grandmother died this, this past week, and so we're asking for prayers for the family as they experience this loss. He's determined to go. Where else have you seen God at work in your world this week? <laughs> right here in church. Armand's service will be this Friday at 3 o'clock here, and so Barb is saying she's, she's felt God's presence through the members of this church family who've surrounded her with love through all these months and in these last couple of weeks. Yeah, great. Having your family together for Christmas is really awesome. Right, right, wonderful celebration. Christmas out. I've seen God at work this whole year in this church and in all the, the support that you all give to each other and the ways that the members of this family of faith nurture each other and hold each other up and walk with each other through good times and bad times. I see God in that every single week. I see God in the ways that you all serve each other and the community and the world. And I thank God for that. I have seen God move powerfully in individuals in this church as they've come to deepen their relationships with God and with each other. I celebrate all of that today and the work of God in all of that. Should we be in prayer together? Holy and everlasting God, you, you are the beginning and the end of all our days and all our living. You are past and present and future. You are old year and new year. You are our God of all our times and seasons. And for this we give you thanks. We come to the turning of another year. And as we do each year, we make promises to ourselves, if not to others. We make resolutions. We determine to do better and to be better, to live better in the coming year. 
And Holy One, you know how most of those things usually go. But we ask this year that you will strengthen our resolve to live more closely with you. That you will help us grow in our faith Strengthen us in our ministry. Uphold us in our prayer. As we live in love with you and with our neighbors. Holy One, we're not so good at keeping resolutions of the faith kind. Some of us have resolved to read the Bible all the way through this year. And some of us will get lost in Leviticus and stop. Some of us have resolved to make a daily prayer time. And some of us will get lost in the minutia of everyday living. Some of us will resolve to give more money or time to causes that need it. And some of us along about March will forget about it. Holy One, we're notoriously bad at keeping resolutions. And so help us depend on you for strength and resolve and purpose. Help us lean into your promise that you are with us in every moment of every day, in all things. Help us trust that you will teach us to keep our promises to you. Because, Holy One, we need you. The deepest desires of our hearts are rooted in our need for you. And so we come at the end of an old year and the turning of a new, celebrating the birth of the Christ child and hoping that he will be born anew in us. We trust. Help us trust more. It is in our life with you that we find the strength to be love and grace and peace for others. We've begun that work here as we've mentioned names of those who need prayer this morning, but we carry so many more in our hearts, friends, family, neighbors, all those that we've renewed our contact with over the Christmas season. So many stories, so many needs, so many hopes. And Holy One, we bring them here to you and to each other. Hear us as we lift their names to you, as we speak them aloud. name is a life, a story, a need, a hope, a dream. You know each of these needs, you know each of the problems, the struggles, yet we are bold enough and trusting enough to ask you anyway, Lord, in your love, hear our prayers, for we ask each one in the name of the one who comes to us at Christmas and always, the one who teaches us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, One of the best ways we celebrate Christmas, one of the most joyful 
ways we celebrate Christmas is through carols and song. And so, all the carols you missed singing or we didn't get to your favorite one on Christmas Eve, or you just want to sing carols again, we're going to spend some time doing that this morning. Sean is ready after that offertory. He's, he's ready. He's warmed up now. So we're going to take requests, and we'll sing a verse or two of each one, and we'll get through quite a few carols this morning, if that's okay with y'all. Yeah. 242. Love came down at Christmas. Let's go ahead and sing one and three, verses one and three. Number 242. Holy, infant, lowly. We'll sing both verses of that.
218. One verse? Sure. One verse. Two two eight. He is born. First verse. Nineteen. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. What do we got? Joy to the world. This one. One verse.
230? 230? Did I hear that right? Okay. Whoa. Goodness. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. A reading from the book of Revelation. I saw heaven and earth new created, gone the first heaven, gone the first earth, gone the sea. I saw holy Jerusalem new created, descending resplendent out of heaven, as ready for God as a bride for her husband. I heard a voice thunder from the throne, look, look. God has moved into the neighborhood, making a home with men and women. They're God's people, and God is their God. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death is gone for good. Tears gone, crying gone, pain gone. All the first order of things gone. The enthroned continued, look, I'm making everything new. Write it all down, each word dependable and accurate. Then he said, it has happened. I am A to Z. I am the beginning. I'm the conclusion. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It may seem odd to have a reading from Revelation. I'm sorry, I, I can't stand anymore. <laughs> um, I'm sorry if you can't see me. Um, it may seem odd to have a reading from Revelation during Christmas, doesn't it? But, but there's a piece of that that is extremely important as we celebrate the coming of Christ with us. The piece that's important about that and the piece that I have been um, sort of living in from that passage for the past few weeks is that God has moved into the neighborhood. God has pitched a tent among God's people that's what we sing about it every Christmas. That's what all the carols we sang this morning were about. God has come, not in the abstract, not as a thought or a good feeling, not as even great good tidings of great joy. God has come and fleshed to be with God's people. God has come to be one of us. If you look at every single Christmas carol in the hymnal, that's, that's the punchline. That's the important piece. God is with us. And we celebrate that during this Christmas season. You know, we're, we're on day six of, of the 12 days of Christmas, right? The cookies are all eaten, right? No? Ooh. You're sugared out. The presents are opened. I actually have one sitting under the tree that I haven't opened yet. Some of the presents are broken already. I was thumbing through Facebook 
yesterday or the day before, people are already selling their Christmas presents. The Christmas songs aren't running 24-7 in the stores anymore. Thank you. What are we left with? We're left with the the glorious truth, the good news that God has bothered to be with us. God has moved into the neighborhood. You hear it through the scriptures, all through Advent. You hear it through the carols. God cares enough to be with us. That is good news, great good news, great tidings, great joy. But eventually Christmas ends. And the world goes on, and we don't have the trimmings or the scriptures or the carols to remind us, to bring us into that truth again and again and again. We're left only with the echoes of the good news. And we're left with the turning of a year and resolutions, however you want to structure that in your own lives. Some people call them resolutions, some people don't bother But how does the good news that we celebrate all of this season shape the way we're going to live for the next 358 days until the next manger season? What difference does it make that God is with us? What difference does it make in our own lives when you go home today after this worship service? What difference does it make in the life of this church together that God is with us, powerfully with us? How does it change how we go into the new year? Because if there's no change, if it doesn't make a difference that God is present with us, with you and me and us, why go to all the trouble of Christmas anyway? Why do all the decorating? Why do all the fa la la ing? Why do all the uh, all the stuff we do if it doesn't make a difference that God is with us? This coming of God is news. Good, exciting news. We should tell it like we tell the other good news of our lives babies and weddings and successful surgeries and remissions and new jobs, all those things that we shout from the rooftop when they happen to us. Do we shout the good news of God with us in the same way? Do we tell everyone we see? Do we speak it at home and at work and in our neighborhoods? Do we share this immense good news, the same way we share all the other good newses of our lives. That's my takeaway this Christmas season, anyway. There is good news to tell. There is powerful good news that God is with us. I'm not very good at speaking that news every day beyond the walls of this church. That's my resolution, to get better at that, to speak that good news as I speak all the other good news in my life. My prayer for you and me and for us together is that we become bearers of good tidings, of great joy, not just at the Christmas Eve service, not just today, but every day in this coming year. My prayer for us all. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain. Nobody requested that. Usually somebody requests that, but here we are. Number 251, stand, if you're comfortable and able doing so. And let's sing together.
go into the last six days of Christmas, as you go into this week, back to normal, whatever that is, as you go into this world that cries out for a Savior, that cries out for the presence of God, go and be bearers of that news. Go and may the love and the grace and the peace of the Christ go with you as you do. Amen.